Well, I first started filmmaking as a teenager, actually. I was very fortunate to get a scholarship to a uh, great preparatory school in, in near Boston, and they had an excellent film and arts program. So I started making films in high school, continued in college, and then just uh, apprenticed documentary filmmakers after that, and just little by little continued with filmmaking. So it's been about 25 years or so. Um, and then as far as where my inspiration comes from, I did grow up in the city of Boston in a very multicultural and diverse neighborhood named the South End. And I grew up in a public housing development that actually was built the first year we moved there in 1966. And it was always very mixed. It was a very diverse neighborhood. And I think all of my films now that, as a, that I'm a teacher, I teach film in Boston to teenagers, uh, most of whom are immigrants. Um, I think a lot of my inspiration comes from them. and comes from my background just growing up in that same environment. Um, however, not being an immigrant, so I sort of see it from a different perspective, maybe. But that's where most of my films are, the inspiration is, it comes from that, and, and really working with teens. So most of my films also have youth as a subject matter as well. Well, um, again, because I work with mostly immigrant youth, I hear sometimes stories from them about their families and their struggles as immigrants in, in the United States. And um, this particular story, the genesis came out of a... Um, an, an incident, really, a teacher from the Ivory Coast who had been teaching at a Boston public high school for approximately 10 years, and one day he got his visa renewal notice in the mail, and he um, read the number, the date wrong on it, and he actually went to his appointment at the immigration office a week late. And unfortunately what happened is he was deported. It took almost two years for the whole process to run its course, but this, this teacher, this very upstanding uh, contributing person to the economy and society was deported and it really uh, upset a lot of his students as well. The school shut down for a day in protest. Senators Kerry and Kennedy came out in, in his defense. Um, so that was one of the inspirations for that film. Um, and again, the two girls who are in the film, it focuses on a girl from Haiti and another girl from the Ivory Coast. They've also told me similar stories about the struggles just to even afford, for instance, to pay for a green card or a, a work in HB1 visa. So um, that was the genesis of that film. And again, immigration and immigration reform in the U.S. is, is always a hot topic. And I think none more so than now when the, when the economy is not doing the greatest either. Um, and uh, although I don't know the history of immigration in Spain, I do know that, that there's certainly uh, an influx of immigrants, particularly maybe from North Africa, from Ecuador, Colombia, other Latin American countries. So I think there's some similarities there in how our countries deal with immigration and uh, understanding how, at least in my belief, a multicultural society actually strengthens uh, the institutions of democracy that we have. Yeah, that film Solace um, again came about through my teaching and working with youth in Boston. This time it was in a different neighborhood named South Boston, which was a traditionally Irish neighborhood, Irish immigrant neighborhood. And throughout my work there, I kind of noticed that the, some of the youth were struggling with addiction, with teen pregnancy, with some violence, which is, you know, not, it's, it's not, uh, unique to that neighborhood of course but I noticed it particularly in that in that particular community and uh, again hearing the stories of these young people I decided to make a film but really make it about a place also not just so much um, characters or a story but really about this community at this particular time uh, so I decided to as a challenge to myself as a filmmaker seeing if I could tell a story without words without dialogue but with just the ambient sound from the city all these sounds that we hear every day, the planes, the trucks, and dogs, and cars, and everything we hear, maybe don't forget about, I decided to weave that into sort of like a, a musical score in the film, and follow around this one character, this one teenage boy, throughout his day. Uh, and that was Solace. The film Where is Estelle was from 2007, and uh, once again, it was inspired by stories I was hearing from some of my students. Um, most of the students um, that I work with, in addition to being immigrants, some of them are also just born in the USA, but they're Latin American. La la the origins are from, say, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Colombia, Brazil, um, as well as African American students. In the cities throughout the country, um, typically they get targeted more by the military for recruitment. Um, more so than say more affluent suburbs. So in a lot of public high schools there are there's a JROTC office and that just stands for Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps office and what they do is it's an after-school program where the students are sort of trained in basic military uh, 
history as well as uh, different kind of exercises. Um, and so that by the time they're 18, they're more eager to join the military. Um, and the, I, of, of course I support the military and that every nation needs a military. However, what, what bothered me is that traditionally it was these disproportionately um, disadvantaged communities that were getting targeted um, and not really given the option of college instead and not being encouraged to go to college but instead being encouraged to just go into the military. Which of course can lead to college down the road but it's also kind of made me sad or frustrated that these young people I work with who were so bright and so, had so much potential were constantly being steered into that one path alone. Not academics, but just the military. So that's where that film came about. Well, I think it was great. I mean, we, the, the, the two classes I met with were bilingual classes, so they, even though I had Spanish subtitles in the film, they understood, I believe, the, the messages in the film and the stories. They were about 14 years old. I think they're in approximately ninth grade, the equivalent of ninth grade for the U.S. They were a little bit shy at first, I think, to ask questions, but then after they got warmed up a bit and saw a couple of the films and some of them, some of the issues or messages in there maybe touched them more. So they had, they had a fair amount of questions and, um, I also encourage them, uh, as encourage all young people I know, that nowadays there's really very little excuse not to make a film if you really want to tell a story that way. Video cameras are really cheap now, some schools have them. Um, editing software you can get for free online. Uh, and then submit your, your short films to film festivals or YouTube or other websites. So it's a great way for, for young people to be creative and express themselves.